So um, you know, we're going to switch gears uh, yet again for our last speaker today, and we're going to welcome uh, Ishwar. Uh, Ishwar Palakar is the Chief Technologist for Telecommunications Vertical at Amazon Web Services. Ishwar is responsible for AWS technology initiatives in mobile edge computing, virtualized network stacks, private networks, and defining new cloud services to enable next generation telecommunication services and to power the fourth industrial revolution. Prior to AWS, Ishwar was a distinguished engineer at Cisco and chief architect for the business units responsible for telco access routing, mobile backhaul, packet core, small cell, and network orchestration. So Ishwar is really now focused on the problem space that we're exploring through this event. So it's terrific to have Ishwar joining us today and I'm excited to hear uh, from Amazon now. So Ishwar, please take it away. Uh, thank you, Timon, uh, for uh, the kind introduction. Uh, thanks to ONF for uh, this opportunity uh, to speak in front of uh, this audience. And uh, good evening, uh, good morning to all who uh, joined the session. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, how AWS Edge is powering the fourth industrial revolution uh, by building the connected edge cloud. Uh, uh, here's the outline of my talk. Uh, I'll start with uh, expectations of the developer community in using the edge. Uh, we at AWS uh, uh, start with customers and work backwards. Uh, and we've learned a lot uh, by talking to uh, the developers and our customers and fed that into our vision of uh, the AWS Edge, which I'll talk about next. Then I'll go a little deeper into uh, the, some of the technology assets that we have, uh, which are um, in the Edge infrastructure space and then uh, building of private networks. So I'll give a little bit of a flavor of what uh, assets we have and what we are doing in that space. Uh, lastly, I'll talk about services for the connected Edge. Uh, we believe that uh, the applications at the edge and the constraints of the edge require uh, either some new services or enhancements to existing services. So I'll talk about a couple of categories of uh, services in that. So uh, we've been talking to uh, customers and developers over the last few years, looking at how they would like to use the edge. Uh, and I won't go into details of all of these use cases uh, because a lot of the other speakers have spoken about them already. Uh, but essentially, there is definitely a significant opportunity here in front of us in terms of applications that can be uh, that can take advantage uh, of a connected edge cloud. And as you can see uh, here, the key thing to note is the applications span multiple verticals: healthcare, retail. Uh, uh, transportation, uh, media and content, uh, agriculture. So it's a pretty uh, wide uh, expanse of uh, verticals uh, that the application span. The second thing to note is some common characteristics or some of the key characteristics of these applications. So clearly one is latency. A lot of these require very low latency and hence need to be close to the edge. Some of them have a data residency requirement, uh, which means that the data needs to be local for again, for various reasons, for privacy, uh, for uh, uh, managing the cost of moving data all the way to the cloud, uh, as well as security in some cases. Um, the other key thing to note here is that the foundational technologies that you see, uh, uh, AI, ML, uh, machine learning, and artificial intelligence is a, is a large uh, uh, category uh, of, of uh, applications. Uh, also, the scale of devices is large. So these are some of the key technology characteristics that we've seen in the applications that our developers have, are wanting to deploy at the edge. Uh, one interesting thing we also observed is uh, uh, some of the customers and developers uh, do want to run uh, workloads on premises at the edge uh, because they are still early in their journey to moving workloads and applications to the region. So that also is one category of uh, developers and customers. So besides these use cases, what do really edge cloud developers want? So we tapped into a large uh, ecosystem of uh, developers and customers to really understand what is it that they really want in addition to the use cases that we just saw. So firstly, uh, we found that they want same reliable, secure, same reliable, secure, and high performance infrastructure that's available in the cloud today. So customers have gotten used to the performance and the reliability and the security that we provide in, in the cloud. 
And the expectation here is that you get the same level, uh, you know, even though you are at the edge or on premises. Secondly, uh, they want the same operational consistency. So whenever you have uh, upgrades to services, patches to services, uh, uh, as well as versions of software changing, they want to see the same changes in the edge and on premises as, uh, as, as they see in the cloud. Thirdly, they want to see the same services and APIs. Uh, again, there's a rich set of services that have evolved uh, over time uh, in cloud computing, and there are APIs that uh, developers are very familiar with it, familiar with, um, and the developers are loath to want to learn new services or change and refactor their software just for the edge. So a lot of the applications uh, uh, run in the cloud as well as on the edge, and for maintaining the consistency between those, they want same services and APIs. And for the same reason, same tools for automation, deployment and security controls. And lastly, uh, the innovation, keeping the same pace of innovation as in the cloud. Cloud computing is moving at a very rapid clip and we are delivering new services and building new features uh, very rapidly. And the edge cloud, uh, users want to have the same pace uh, of innovation that they see in the cloud. So anything that's changed in the cloud, any new feature or service available in the cloud needs to be reflected uh, immediately in the, in the edge uh, locations as well. So we took all of this uh, learnings and that has what has fed into our vision of the edge. So today we have large regions uh, uh, across the globe. These are very large data centers. We have 24 of them globally, uh, and we announced six more coming up soon. And this is where bulk of the cloud computing happens. Uh, the regions are broken into availability zones, which are just uh, data centers uh, connected with very high speed transport for, uh, and you can duplicate, replicate applications for availability reasons. Uh, we have introduced two categories of AWS infrastructure uh, in edge locations. Uh, one, the first one is local zones and the second one is AWS Wavelength. These uh, local zones are AWS infrastructure and services that are close to large populations uh, or industries or IT centers. Uh, they are the same set of AWS infrastructure and services that run in the region, uh, but based on the capacity available, uh, a selected set of services are run in this. And you can look at this as an extension of an availability zone, essentially. So we announced the first one in LA, in, in Los Angeles, uh, as it is the media center. Uh, and we, we have five local zones now, and we're announcing uh, 12 more uh, coming up uh, in the next year. Now, AWS Wavelength is also AWS infrastructure and services, uh, but these reside in locations within carrier networks. So here we partner with carriers and uh, install our infrastructure and deploy services, again, selected services from the large set of services uh, within, so that mobile, edge, mobile devices can connect directly to applications without leaving the telecommunication network. So you are essentially within the telecom network and accessing AWS services uh, through mobile edge devices. Now here we are partnered with a carrier in the US. Uh, we have eight wavelength zones here. Uh, in, the, in North America, and we are launching uh, new wavelength zones in Europe, uh, Japan, and Korea with uh, carriers there as well. Now, the third uh, category of uh, edge infrastructure is AWS Outposts. This is AWS infrastructure and services in virtually any data center uh, on premises uh, that a customer might want to deploy, uh, deploy in. So these are uh, managed by AWS and they run selected set of services and they come in different form factors and uh, can be run in uh, on premises. So the difference between local zones and wavelengths is uh, local zones and wavelengths are managed completely by AWS in AWS owned locations, whereas outposts are in on premises facilities. This could be uh, uh, industrial, uh, uh, manufacturing plants uh, or customers own data centers. Now moving along, uh, we have Snowball Edge, which is a ruggedized uh, 
device with compute and storage. Uh, and this is suited for uh, deployments where you need ruggedization uh, and there is not as good connectivity to the cloud. So essentially this is different from Outpost in the sense that it allows for uh, disconnected operations as well. And on top of this infrastructure, we have services uh, which are uh, run on top of this infrastructure. And these are designed specifically for edge applications. So there's uh, green grass for IoT applications. And then we have a bunch of uh, services in the machine learning space. And I'll talk about this more uh, in, in detail in, in towards the end of the presentation. And lastly, we have free Artos, which is a real-time operating system to uh, allow uh, low power devices to uh, connect uh, to the cloud in, in IoT scenarios. So this is again to allow the edge uh, device ecosystem uh, into, the, into the edge cloud. So uh, moving to how we use these assets to build a private network. So one of the things we've been looking at for a while now is how we can build a mobile private network solution based on some of these assets. Uh, we have a solution uh, where we use uh, these assets, uh, the, the edge infrastructure that I just mentioned, uh, in particular Snowball, Edge, and Outposts. And services in partnership with our network vendors, with 4G and 5G network vendors and carriers to deploy uh, private mobile networks. Now these are, this could be CBRS, this could be a 4G or 5G. And this is in partnership. So what AWS brings uh, to the equation here is edge infrastructure. And as I mentioned specifically, uh, AWS Outposts and Snowball Edge, these uh, in this infrastructure is uh, installed in the on-prem location where you want to build a private network. Uh, and then this comes with AWS services, both in the region and the edge. Depending on the application, you might want to choose IoT services or AIML services or any of the other services that are capable of uh, running at the edge. Uh, the other key value we bring here uh, in this uh, solution uh, is orchestration and management. Uh, a lot of these services uh, uh, are orchestrated and managed from the region. And that is one of the key values uh, that uh, the AWS infrastructure and services brings uh, to this particular solution. And of course, there's an integrated DevOps pipeline, uh, which fits in very nicely uh, into the solution. From the partners, uh, we, we rely on the partners for obviously the network components, the 4G, 5G network components, the core and the radio. Uh, there could be other components as well to manage uh, subscriptions. Uh, uh, manage uh, information, other information about the users. Uh, we also rely on the partners for uh, spectrum and spectrum access systems. So depending on whether it's CBRS or 4G or 5G, uh, there would be carriers involved and they would uh, bring spectrum uh, to the solution. Uh, in, 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 in many cases, you need uh, a local IP network. Uh, we definitely need connectivity to AWS. And all of the networking piece uh, that comes here is also uh, managed by the partners. Uh, lastly, subscription management. Uh, this uh, is also something that we rely on the partners for. So essentially, as a, with the combination of the assets we have and working with uh, a very diverse and large partner ecosystem, we have deployed uh, these uh, private mobile networks uh, in, in various uh, locations. And these are some of the uh, existing deployments. Uh, we have a full list of this uh, in, on, on, on our website, uh, but uh, the main categories are manufacturing plants. Here we have applications that do predictive maintenance, do asset management, uh, and, and help with the other business outcomes like quality control. Uh, this was our first uh, private uh, mobile network solution that we implemented almost a couple of years ago. We have uh, evolved and scaled from that into other uh, areas, locations, and applications. So one uh, interesting area is around sport venues. Uh, we have a deployment at Anaheim uh, a a Angel Stadium where applications are running uh, retail uh, point of sale systems, ticketing systems, HD cameras, uh, and uh, uh, 
creating immersive experiences for uh, audiences uh, in the stadiums. Uh, we also have deployments in university uh, campuses uh, where the applications range from online learning uh, and uh, applications to improve collaboration between students uh, on campus, uh, as well as an interesting application around uh, contact tracing for COVID where uh, video cameras uh, analyze uh, movement of uh, students to do contact tracing and come up with physical guidelines for uh, managing uh, COVID. So given these assets, uh, we have the edge infrastructure we mentioned, I mentioned that we have a whole range of uh, uh, different types of uh, edge infrastructure assets. Uh, we're also building private networks, but one of the things we realized as we talked to developers and customers that uh, some of these applications require very specific services or enhancement to, enhancements to existing services. So one of the things is that the very nature of the applications requires some new services that we do not have in the cloud today or are not required in the cloud today. Secondly, uh, the edge scenarios are quite constrained in terms of power, footprint, cost is a consideration. So that needs also to be taken into account in seeing what are the type of services we need. So I'm gonna talk about uh, two categories of services to give you a flavor of uh, how we are looking at uh, services specifically for the edge. So the first one is the green grass, which is for IoT applications. And by IoT, uh, I mean applications that just have very large scale of uh, uh, small devices, uh, essentially connected to either gateways or a central system or the cloud. What green grass does is uh, it's basically a software with a set of uh, uh, services underlying to allow edge devices to securely connect to the cloud uh, and be managed effectively uh, by the cloud. Uh, Greengrass also allows for enabling uh, con communication between these devices over local networks. It does things like uh, allows the devices to operate offline uh, when there's a loss of connectivity by maintaining shadow uh, of the devices in the cloud so that when the devices come online, the data can be synchronized. Uh, Greengrass also has Lambda functions, uh, which can use local resources to do local computation. We find that a uh, lot of the applications that run in, uh, in, in, in this space require uh, very small uh, amounts of uh, periodic computation, which is why Lambda is a great uh, service uh, for those kind of applications. Uh, uh, that, that can be like you, you have you have alarms that are triggered of events and, and Lambda becomes a, a, the perfect computational abstraction for some of those applications. So Greengrass also allows for Lambda functions uh, at the edge. Lastly, we have uh, capability in Greengrass to do updates uh, over the air. So as you can see, uh, this service set of services were developed specifically for edge applications in industrial automation and retail uh, uh, and, and, and transportation. Uh, the other category of applications I wanted to talk about or services I wanted to talk about was uh, AI and ML, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, and again, we have a very broad portfolio of services and this is gonna be an eye chart. So I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I wanted to give you uh, uh, a sense of how we are approaching uh, enhancing some of these services and developing services in this stack specifically for the connected edge cloud. So we like to look at uh, AIML as three layers of the stack. At the very bottom, we have frameworks and infrastructure interfaces. And this is for the expert machine learning practitioner. The the deep experts in this space want the flexibility of choosing platforms because they don't want to port uh, models based on one platform to another. So we allow for a flexibility of uh, platforms here, TensorFlow, MXNet, PyTorch. Uh, also, uh, we allow for choices in the processors, uh, in terms of processors, GPUs, and FPGA. Now, what we've done here is we have developed custom chips for inference and training. 
So what we saw when we talked to the developers uh, using the edge uh, is that there's obviously a constraint in terms of power, uh, in terms of uh, footprint, uh, as well as capacity that you can have in these locations. And obviously edge devices are even more constrained uh, than just the edge locations where you can have infrastructure. Uh, so we've designed custom chips uh, for inference as well as a training uh, that are significantly efficient in terms of uh, throughput as well as cost. So Inferentia is, is available now and training, a Trainium should be coming out soon. If you look at the middle layer of the stack, this is for developers, uh, data scientists, and IT professionals who do not want uh, the, uh, all of the flexibility that's uh, under the hood uh, of uh, machine learning uh, uh, algorithms. SageMaker uh, is a integrated developer environment, which has a whole bunch of tools and services for data scientist practitioners to build, deploy uh, training models, to uh, do experimentation with these models, to tune these models, detect biases, uh, tune parameters, debug them, and deploy them in production. So there's, again, a whole bunch of services that we have provided here, and this is for uh, the the practitioners who are data scientists and not not uh, deep uh, machine learning practitioners. When when developers started using these uh, services and applying to the applying them to edge applications and edge locations, they found that there were some challenges they had in in using these. There are situations where you can't fit a large training model in an edge location and you have to settle for a uh, smaller model uh, with lower accuracy. There are scenarios where you need multiple models uh, if you're doing multiple predictions, for example, and you need to uh, load and unload uh, training models to do that. And again, that is a that can be a fairly complex process. So what we did is we looked at this and listened to our customers and developers trying to use the edge and came up with SageMaker Edge Manager. Now what Edge Manager does is uh, makes it simple, takes the complexity out for developers to deploy their training models uh, on Edge devices. So it does uh, quite a few things, but a couple of them are, it optimizes the model for the hardware platform that is being used at the Edge. So it has an understanding of the various uh, possibilities uh, in terms of hardware infrastructure and the GPUs, processors, and uh, uh, chips that are used uh, for uh, uh, at the edge, and it automatically optimizes the model uh, for those hardware platforms. Secondly, it allows you to deploy models from a production model to edge devices selectively. So you can selectively uh, uh, unload and load models depending upon the prediction uh, that's required at the edge. So you can have prediction uh, event triggers that uh, uh, inform this edge manager and the edge manager automatically deploys the model uh, from the production environment in the cloud to the edge device or the edge infrastructure. We also have a SageMaker edge manager agent which runs on edge devices. And this is a, a link between the model in the, uh, on the edge, in the edge cloud and the application uh, that is using the model. So essentially uh, you can have <clears throat> You can have this uh, edge manager agent even embedded in the application so that it can uh, communicate between the model and the application. At the top of the stack, we have AI services, which are for solution oriented customers and developers who just want to use an API call uh, and not even have to build models, training models. Uh, in this space, of course, there's uh, uh, several services. We have uh, services for uh, transcribing text uh, to speech, uh, recognizing objects in videos and pictures, uh, and so forth. So there's a whole range, and you know, this is an exploding field. What we've done is looked at applications and added uh, AI services specifically for uh, industrial, in the industrial space, uh, as well as in the health space. And again, here I'll talk about a couple of them to give you a flavor of why 
uh, these are needed and these are different uh, customized for the connected edge cloud applications. So Amazon Lookout uh, for equipment um, is an AI service that looks for product defects in a production line. Uh, so it, it just takes data from the, from the site. Uh, the training models are all there. They get tuned based on uh, what the data is and what, uh, what is required here. Uh, and they identify defects, product defects, uh, and can be fed into um, uh, optimizing the production line or uh, understanding uh, how to tune the production line, uh, root cause the defects, the cause of the defects, and, and manage that by uh, making changes to the production line. So this is one AI service that is uh, very useful for uh, industrial um, manufacturing plants and production lines. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Amazon Monitron, uh, which essentially is an end-to-end system in involving sensors uh, as well as edge devices that monitor uh, various parameters uh, from, from production lines. And these can be fed into business outcomes like uh, uh, doing predictive maintenance, uh, as well as asset management. Uh, we have AWS Panorama, uh, which is uh, an appliance as well as an SDK for adding computer vision models to cameras, which either, either do not have them or, or are not uh, high grade enough to do the level of computer vision analysis that is required. So this is just an example of the type of uh, dedicated customized services we are developing or enhancements to existing stack and services that we are making uh, to address uh, applications uh, in the uh, connected edge cloud. Uh, in summary, uh, I think this is a big opportunity in front of us. Uh, and 5G connected edge, edge is here, it's a large opportunity. But for it to be successful, the, we need a three-pronged approach. Uh, in terms of the infrastructure, we need multiple options. There are different applications uh, that require different amounts of capacity uh, and can tolerate certain amounts of latency. So you, you need to have different options. And as I uh, showed in my earlier slide at AWS, we look at it as wavelength zones, local zones, and outpost snowball edges on premises. Secondly, you need services for connected edge applications. So you, what we've observed, what we've learned from talking to customers and developers is uh, while the existing services work for several of the applications, there is a need for looking very closely at the needs of the applications and the constraints of the edge to develop new services. And I think this area is just starting. I, I foresee a lot more services uh, that would have to be developed for uh, running connected uh, for running applications in the connected edge. And lastly, it's a partner uh, play, partner ecosystem play. It can't be done just with the uh, cloud providers. You need partners, uh, network vendors that build uh, the networking functions and networking stacks, as well as operators who are uh, key players uh, in, in this uh, overall uh, equation. So that's all I had. Uh, thank you for your time and I'll take questions if you have any. Ishwar, thank you very much. That was uh, really terrific, and we and we do have questions, and uh, you know we're tight on time, but uh, there's interest. If you can stay stay with us for a few minutes, I think we should entertain some of these questions because you covered a lot of, of ground, and uh, there's clearly interest out there. Um, sure. So you know, I think in the edge space, uh, you know, you talked about a couple of big buckets that are coming together in this transformation, which is terrific because that's kind of what this event is all about. These these different these intersections of these um, these different big buckets. Uh, the, the first big bucket you talked about was edge, and um, so a question about you, you mentioned I think in passing that Snowball can run disconnected, and so that sort of begs the question if um, your other platforms or Outpost can run disconnected, and and what makes dif um, Snowball different? What do you do differently? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, outposts, local zones, wavelengths are all connected to the regions. Uh, uh, Snowball Edge is different in, this, in that sense. It's, it works in a disconnected mode. Uh, and uh, the reason, one of the reasons we, we needed an asset like this, there are, uh, there are locations where you might not have great connectivity. Uh, you might have lower bandwidth or not have connectivity like mining, oil rigs. You know, there, there are several uh, uh, scenarios like that. 
to you answer your second question, uh, uh, outpost, uh, the control plane runs in the region. Uh, it's tethered to the region. So all of the monitoring as well as API calls run over that tether to the region. Uh, it does work in a disconnected operation. Uh, what happens when, you, when, if and when you get disconnected is that you will continue running the applications. You might not, you won't be able to mutate the environment. So you can't launch a new instance or terminate an instance, but any application that's running keeps on running. So there is no disruption to service. It's just that you can't mutate uh, the, the configurations or the environment uh, while it's down. Uh, however, we do have a lot of reliability uh, hook, hooks and uh, features uh, to kind of minimize that as well. Thank you. Very good. Uh, so I guess um, maybe related, um, you know, is it possible to host third party apps on a local edge or um, do we need to have those applications available in an AWS portal? Uh, no, so yeah, so they have to be available on AWS portal. Uh, one of the, uh, it, it, well, it's not like they have to be available on AWS portal. Uh, the AWS portal is the way of uh, getting into any of these edge uh, infrastructure, uh, uh, any of these ed ed edge infrastructure platforms. Uh, as, as I mentioned in one of my earlier slides, one of the things we learned from our customers and developers is they want to have the same experience. They don't want to have a different exp experience in terms of uh, engaging with the platform as well as deploying their application. So we have uh, taken uh, a lot of care and paid a lot of attention to how we could make that work with the constraints of the edge. Uh, but to answer your question, yes, you log into uh, AWS consoles and run and fire instances like you would do in the region and run your applications like you would. So, um, you know, I've heard um, studies have shown that like enterprises typically run with more than one cloud provider, something like 2.x cloud providers or something, you know, for different apps. Um, but what we're seeing emerge here in the edge space is this, it seems like this tight integration of the edge to the public cloud. So I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about this or how, you know, um, if enterprises are going to feel compelled to, um, you know, if they, if they want capabilities from different cloud providers, you know, and how, how that marries with uh, edge deployments. Uh, we, we've seen enterprises, I, I, there's, uh, I, I don't think this excludes or precludes uh, different uh, clouds from running in, uh, in an edge location. Uh, it depends on the enterprises. We've seen enterprises that might want that. Uh, but again, as we said, listening to the developers and the customers, uh, the overriding, overarching factor we found was, uh, uh, a consistency between how they're used to running the cloud and the applications today uh, between the regions and the edge. So that has been fairly overriding in terms of how they want to deploy applications. There's a lot of work required in refactoring applications. A lot of the applications that are run require a part of the application to run in the region. You look at gaming, you look at uh, 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 any AI ML application, you know, the training typically runs in the region or in a large uh, cost effective uh, data center and the inference runs at the edge. Uh, so we see patterns in uh, a large uh, set of these applications which have a cloud and a region component to them as well. So which is uh, kind of the primary reason we've built our edge uh, strategy and edge infrastructure options uh, tied to the regions. Got it. So, um, so moving on to the connectivity bucket of, of what you discussed, um, it, it looks like you've got a, a partnering strategy essentially for um, private connectivity, private networks, CBRS and, and the like. So um, you know, I don't know if you're doing anything actively about integrating it or you know, troubleshooting it, uh, deploying it as a cohesive whole um, at Amazon. Are you really relying on, the, on your partner network? Uh, no, it is a collaboration by a partner network. I meant that we work closely with them to build the solution. So part of that collaboration involves what you just said. We've looked at uh, the, the applications or the workloads that come from partners, the networking functions and other network applications, seen uh, how we can run them efficiently, meet performance, scale, reliability. And in fact, we have made changes to enable running those uh, with the scale, performance, and reliability that's expected in networks. 
and then uh, maybe uh, lastly, just in the services domain, you know, is it possible to disaggregate or, you know, can SageMaker and SageMaker um, Edge Manager run on white box hardware, or does it really have to run on, on Outpost or on Snowball? Yeah. So it, uh, it, it runs on AWS infrastructure. It's an AWS service tied to the AWS infrastructure. Yeah. So it's not an application. It's, it's like a cloud service. Okay, good. Got it. Well, thank you for staying a little bit late. Uh, appreciate that we're able to uh, get some questions in there, but lots of good content in your presentation. Uh, thanks to the audience for staying a touch late as, as well. So, um, you know, with that, we're going to wrap up. And um, so, Ishmael, thank you. Thanks for, thank you, and thanks for the invitation. Thanks.